Hello, this will be the advanced PvP guide for Awakening Corsair. I have already made a beginner's guide for Corsair if you haven't seen that. It's in the description and we covered these topics in that video. So it's really important that you know how the CC limit work. If you already know that, you can skip to the next segment. So in this game, every CC you apply has a number value behind it. And once you reach a number cap, your target will be immune to CC for 5 seconds. So these abilities count as 1 and these abilities count as 0.7. Once your combined numbers in your combo reaches 2, your target is immune to CC. For example, if you use a stun into a knockdown, your target reaches 2 in the CC limit, which means he is now immune to CC. So in an ideal combo, you want to apply a 0.7 ability before you use your last CC. For example, stun into knockback into knockdown. But you of course want to use abilities in between these CC effects. And you typically always want to use a knockdown at the end of your combo because knockdowns has the longest duration out of all of the CCs. There are necessarily no right and wrong combos as long as you combine the necessary abilities needed to kill your target. Now the idea of a combo is obviously to CC your target the longest while dealing the most damage that you can. But sometimes you need to alter the combo depending on if you're fighting multiple people, if your target is an evasion class, if something else is on cooldown and so on. And in order to get the longest CC, the most important rule is to try to get a knockdown at the end and try to get one or two down smash abilities in while they're on the ground. This gives you a total of a 60% chance to extend the knockdown and down smash ignores the 2.0 CC limit rule as well. The second most important thing is to apply as many buffs on you and as many debuffs on your enemy as early as possible. And speaking about buffs and debuffs, we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive into the add-ons and some stuff that a lot of people don't know about them. They did not remove the tier 1 and tier 2 add-ons, they simply moved the tier to the duration and not to the strength of the buff. And something that is very important to know about these buffs is how they interact with other effects within different tiers. Here are three skills with the same buffs but different tiers. If we use a tier 1 into a tier 2 into a tier 3, it works without any issues. But if you try to use the tier 2 add-on after a tier 3, it won't apply. Even if the duration of the current buff is lower than the new buff would be. And because of this I highly recommend not overlapping tiers on the add-ons. I swap my add-ons a lot, but currently this fits my most used combo the best, but it, this is mostly for 1v1 situations. The add-ons are always up to date on my stream by typing exclamation point add-ons. And we also have our community discord, which is free for everyone to join via a variety of channels and would love some new members. Now we'll go over a very important animation in Cancel that I did not discuss in my beginner's guide, which is your SLMB. Only the last hit has a down smash chance and you can bypass the first half of this ability easily by using Shift E first. So we bypass the first half of the skill and immediately use the last hit for the quick damage and the down smash. Combine this with the down smash add-on for a 45% chance to down smash. Now let's go over some combos. What I usually do is start off with a double jump, shift Q, forward R and B and then you go for your C mist. And this is where your options start to appear. In my opinion there are 4 viable options here. We have direction F, direction shift, direction R and B or direction space. The reason behind these abilities are that you're gonna have a hard time to know if your target got CC'd by Seamist or not. So you want to use a protected ability right after Seamist. And it is during these abilities that you have to make a quick assessment if your target is CC'd from the Seamist or not. If the target is CC'd then just go ahead with your combo and you can do something like this. And here is that combo in slow motion.
If you see that your target is not CC'd by this EMS, you can go for a grab. Just know that this can be risky against certain classes. Do not grab if you use direction shift, because your grab is not animation cancelled after this, resulting in a long animation. And then you can do simple poke combos if you manage to get a ranged CC with shift RMB and you do not want to jump in. And then there is also water walking for fun which can also be a very good escape if you're next to some water. There are different ways to do this however. Now regarding the crystals, these are the ones I recommend running. These red ones are locked and I never change them. This is my flex slot where I put in some ignore resist. And on the DR crystals, these are my locked ones. And these green ones are the flex slots for different ignore resist crystals. But you can definitely cater this to your own preference. It's also very important to try and not be predictable. For example, don't always see mist out of your shift Q. Mix it up a bit, otherwise you can easily predict your CCs. You can for example try to iframe out of your shift Q into a C mist right after. It's also very important to keep in mind that your SQ and your shift RMB abilities have their forward guard removed at the end of the ability. And you cannot cancel this, so this is always unprotected at the end. It is extremely important to rotate super armors, iframes and frontal guards. You won't be protected literally 100% of the time, but you can keep it close. Here's a small example of me versus a Dracania where I rotated pretty well. And there isn't a set rotation for this, you simply have to play around with the abilities you have available and practice a lot. Now as a YouTuber, it is required by law that I have to make a tier list, so I guess we'll have to make one. So this is going to be a tier list based on how difficult each spec is according to my opinion and my experience against them. S ranks is the most difficult for us while D is the easiest. Keep in mind that Awakening Corsair is absolutely not top tier in terms of a 1v1 duelist class. However, we can do really well if played correctly. I would personally rank Corsair at a 7 out of 10 in terms of 1v1 capabilities. She's not bad at all, but there's definitely a lot of difficult matchups. These are just my personal opinions on the matchups based on my experience fighting them. It's likely your opinion may differ from mine. I'd love to hear an explanation as to why in the comments. It's always fun to discuss these kinds of things. Since there are over 50 different specs in this game, I won't go into extreme detail how to beat every single class, but I'll discuss the matchup a little bit. Awakened Warrior is a very protected class and have really good bursts of speed to engage you. They have a passive ignore grab resist. You can bypass forward guard abilities versus him with Allure or Sea Mist. Other than that, you simply just gotta fish for a grab. Now for a succession warrior, they are extremely tanky, you have to play around them and poke in and out with different CC catches, try to grab them into a skedaddle iframe. If you are an evasion corsair, you're most likely going to have a difficult time killing them due to their tankiness, but the matchup in itself isn't too hard. Now for Awakened and Succession Musa, this matchup is going to be played on their terms, you do not dictate the speed or the direction of the fight, they come to you, they run away, you cannot chase them and you cannot run away from them, try to keep up shift Q on them as much as possible, which is your 30% movement speed debuff, they are simply a poke and run class, they will fish for CCs and then sprint away, reset and repeat. They also have ranged CC, so always rotate forward guard or super armor abilities even if they are far away. Don't be afraid to S block for a bit when regenerating stamina if they are far away to prevent a ranged CC. A great way to CC a Musa is to use your Ocean's Allure or Sea Mist once he gets close. Don't use this too early while he's sprinting towards you because then he's still protected. You can also try to fish for a grab once he's close. 
All right, so next up we have Awakening Tamer. So you want to try to rotate your mermaid abilities a lot against them just to keep up the 50% grab resist. Tamers are absolutely top tier duelists. This is an extremely difficult matchup. They have a lot of long iframe lingers, extremely fast grab paired with the dash ability. Always be careful for the dash and try to iframe it once they try to grab afterwards. Succession Tamers are very rare, but it's more or less the same as Awakening Tamer. It's just a bit worse in 1v1, I would say. They have less bursts of speed and it's still a Tamer though, so be very careful and play against it somewhat similar as you would against an Awakening Tamer. Also, be very careful about their Q ability because it's a delayed pet CC, so if they use this ability and dash out, their pet is going to CC within that area after a second or two. Now for Succession Dracania, I've fought quite a lot against Succession Dracania and while the matchup in itself is relatively easy, it can still be very volatile, they do an absurd amount of damage and you will never win the damage trading. They are extremely protected and can very easily do a dash into a 180 turn and CC you through your frontal guard. So be very careful of that, this is just a fish for a good Seamus catch through frontal guards or go for grab matchup. Now for Awakened Rakania, this is definitely harder to fight than Succession, they have more iframes, more mobility, however their Q block and their SF is not super armor so you can see mist or allure through these two. Next up is Succession Corsair, this is a grabless spec and does not really pose that big of a threat. It's usually just a drawn out fight because you're more than likely going to be playing an evasion versus evasion matchup, but try to grab during the whale abilities even though they have grab resist up during them. For the mirror matchup it's very important to try and exploit their forward guard abilities or unprotected gaps. Punishing them with sea mist is usually very easy against inexperienced Corsairs, but this is simply a skill matchup and if you apply the tips from the previous video and this one you should be good to go. Now we have the inferior awakened Corsair, also known as Archer. He outranges you by a lot so play a bit aggressive against them, they are relatively easy to catch with our toolkit. But even without CC we're gonna out trade him since they don't really CC us, just make sure to avoid his big hitting abilities so do not stand still. For Scholar this is a class that I've simply felt to be a joke every time I fought them, but recently they released a patch with a lot of buffs and quality of lives for them but I've only fought one Scholar after the update. So this opinion might change soon but currently they are simply bottom tier for me. And we won't even discuss Shy for obvious reasons. We'll group Awakened and Succession Guardian into the same tier here. You fight them exactly the same. The only real difference in the fight is that Awakened is slightly more difficult. They are quite slow and they also passively apply a slow motion debuff on you. So they are definitely annoying but still easy to fight. Most of the time they are easily grab or just outrange them and poke for CCs and you should be good to go. And also, simply just try to outrange them and just poke outside of their AoE range. Awakened and Succession Kuno is definitely a matchup that can be hard. They can be extremely aggressive and very heavy on evasion. So if you're playing evasion yourself, you most likely have to swap accessories to kill them. This is one of the matchups that you just need to practice a lot. Try to look for super armor gaps and see Mister a lot. Simply play as far away as you can while shipping her health down with ranged and counter with the sea miss when she gets close. Awakening Nova is definitely an interesting matchup. In her Excel form her engages are basically instant so be very careful while you use frontal guards against her. She also has a vacuum skill so if you get caught in this one you can just use yet stream during it. But you can try to outtrade her, it's also possible to catch her during combat which is unprotected or either with a frontal guard if they do have the core ability. So Succession Nova, this used to be my main, this is a very weird matchup. Suck Nova has very low accuracy so they will have a hard time killing you if you are evasion. Your literal only CC will be the grab, a good Suck Nova will always be in super armor against you. You won't be able to break her block unless you're full AP build. 
She also has two arranged CCs in her kit that you will need to be careful of. One is fully protected and the other one has a very small gap. A very difficult thing about this matchup is that her minions will CC you even if she is CC'd while on low health. So you need to stay outside of melee range or use protected rotation while she's down. A succession Megu is not hard, it's just a very very annoying matchup. It is by far the most annoying class in the entire game to fight in terms of mechanics. Her constant clones and swapping places with the clone while being extremely protected makes it difficult. But the matchup in itself is still pretty easy and you'll be able to chip her down a little bit while rotating ranged abilities, going for regular sea mists and just continue pressuring her and you most likely won't have that many issues. Now an Awakening Meigo on the other hand, this is definitely a sleeper spec, especially in 1v1. I'm tempted to even put this in S tier, she is extremely strong. Essentially fully protected with super armor, extremely quick CCs with a block jump CC. But this is a class you don't want to be too close to, so try to outrange her and out trade her. When you do get close, do not rely on forward guards, use your whale abilities to trade, she does not have a grab, so try to look for mistakes in her rotation with sea mist catches. Awakening and succession ninjas are very hard to fight, I'm not counting less experienced ninjas, because they're usually very easy, but the actual good ninjas are definitely S tier for us I'd say, this is kind of the same as Kuno, it's just a matchup you have to practice a lot with, and I play this more or less the same as mentioned earlier against Kunos. Now Succession Ranger are relatively easy to deal with, but do not underestimate their damage when trading. Play aggressive while you have your catches ready, SQ, grab, C, mist and so on, then play quite passively in the meantime with forward guarded trade. Do not super armor trade because you likely won't win with the damage. Now Awakened Ranger are a completely different beast, they are one of the best duelists in the entire game in my opinion. It's a spec that essentially rotates Super Armor and iframes permanently in between their grab attempts. Their grab is extremely fast, one of the fastest in the game. Your best approach here is playing relatively far away, poking with the SQ, Shift RMB, Fish for C Mist, Suns when she gets close, and try to grab into his Kidado Council. Awakened Lan is very deadly, her grab has a very big AoE, you absolutely want to try to keep your 50% grab resist buff up as much as possible from your mermaid. Their grab is the biggest strength of the spec, so countering that as much as possible is really important. This is going to be a very poke and run match from both of you, you do not want to be close to her when the grab is ready and she's gonna run away from you when it's not. So try to catch her with sea mists when she gets close and also be very careful when she's in the air because she can dive down on you with CCs. Speaking of being in the air, that is where the Soklan is going to live during this fight. They essentially don't have a cooldown on their fly, they will dive down on you, do a quick fish for a CC, then fly back up. And repeat that over and over again. It is close to suck Megu in terms of annoying matchups. She does have two forward guard engages and you can catch her in a sea mist during these or go for a grab once she lands. Suck DK is a really hard matchup, they are very protected, they have great iframes and absolutely insane damage. You do not want to super armor trade with them, try to outrange them but beware of her quick burst of speed and shadow steps behind you. She can be grabbed but it's risky due to her kit being very CC heavy and very quick. If you want to play it more safe, just rely on Seamus stuns and ranged CCs and try to play as far away as you can. Awakened DK isn't really much of a threat, they still have the shadow step ability in pre-awakening but they are relatively easy to CC and from my experience you can easily outtrade them. And they do not have a grab either so you can easily just uh, super armor trade in your whale abilities too. Awakened Hash is easily one of the most difficult matchups for us. They have extremely good movement, very protected engages and are essentially permanently in super armor. 
they do have a shadow step that is unprotected towards the end if I'm not mistaken but any good Hashashin won't use that against you since that is basically your only opening. This is simply not going to be a good fight for you. You can try to grab during longer super armor abilities from them but they can easily retaliate with a CC. You can try to constantly be moving away from them while shipping away at their health. Sakash is very different, it's still a dangerous matchup, but they don't have the same amount of protection, pressure, nor do they have a grab, making your super armor trading with wheel abilities very valuable here. Applying slow with shift Q is very valuable against both succession and awakening hash. Now regarding both Awakening and Succession Maeva, this is quite similar to the Musa matchups. They dash, fish for CCs, dash away. Your opening lies within their melee CC fish attempts and not during their dashes. Try to counter with C miss and potential grabs during the dashes. And always be careful for the ranged CCs with them. I'm gonna rank both Mystic Specs the same, they basically feel identical playing against. They function the same, try not to be too close to them, they have a lot of slows on you which will make it annoying to fight so try to dodge them as much as possible. Kite them once they get close, try to have a good uptime on your 50% grab rest from whale abilities especially when you think they are going to engage you. Both of them do have a grab as well. And now for Sage, this will most likely be the most controversial pick I'd say, but for me Awakened Sage is S tier. I truly have a really hard time fighting them in 1v1. I mainly play with evasion and Sage is just passively hard countering evasion, they basically ignores it all. They feel like an empowered Zork, he has a very good grab as well. The only tip I would have is to go full AP and just pressure him with super armor trades as much as you can and do not go evasion against them. Succession Sage is easier to handle so we'll rank him lower but it's still a very difficult match for me. But again, that's because I'm mainly playing Evasion. If you are going full AP, Suck Sage is most likely not going to pose that big of a threat. You can win the Super Armor trades against him, but do not underestimate his damage and rotate your frontal guards and iframes well against this. I'm not gonna lie, I think I've only ever fought one Succession Striker ever. You won't find them. If you do, they are not a threat. But fight them the same way you'd fight Mystics. Now Awakening Striker on the other hand, they are very strong, insanely protected, very quick bursts of speed to grab you. So try to always keep your mermaid buff up as much as you can and do not underestimate the movement speed slow from your shift Q on them. Grab is going to be one of the only CCs you'll be able to apply against a good Awakening Striker, so try not to waste your grab against them. So everyone knows Zork to be the iframe monster, these fights usually turn out to be very drawn out, but they do not have a grab and they are quite slow, so unless you mess up they are quite easy to deal with. Just rotate super armors as much as you can, try to fish for CCs with sea mist, can go for a risky grab into skedaddle if you feel comfortable in the fight. Once your catches are on CD and you are kiting, Sork will burn stamina very quickly while chasing you, which can result in an easy catch once the sea mist is back up again. But typically you will also win the super armor trades and they usually use the crow ability for stamina regen, this is an easy grab. Now Saksorg is basically the same as Awakening is way worse in my opinion. She does however do a lot of damage but is very slow and predictable. You can outrange her and poke her down in between your CC attempts but do know that she does have some ranged CC. Awakened Valkyrie is an extremely hard fight. You really want to keep your whale grab resist buffs up as much as possible. Ideally you want to be AP for this and not evasion because if you can't one combo her she will just heal up in between your combos. And she's a very very tanky class, most of them run double narcs, even double Kadri, they have a lot of DR. But as long as you have the damage to actually punish them when they go in for you, they can be managed. 
they do have a ranged CC where they teleport to you into a knockdown as well as a ranged bound Suck Valk is not a common spec at all, they are very rare but annoying to fight. They still do lots of damage and have extra passive all risk, so it makes them harder to CC. Alright, so Witch and Wizard. I've never really had any struggle with either of them unless they vastly outgear me. Neither of the Witch specs actually present a threat to you in an actual 1v1. The only dangerous things about any of these matchups will be the grab from Awakening Wizard and the Witch's slows. But other than that, it's essentially a really good matchup for us. Awakened Wuza is just something you will never encounter and if you manage to do that they simply pose no threat at all. All of their damage is extremely delayed and they basically have no reliable and good CC catches. Just pretend that they are a mob and you'll be fine. Succession Wuza on the other hand has the potential of being a big threat. She has great protected mobility, she has a lot of frontal guards which we can counter with Allure or Seamus. They are also a class that you can grab due to some longer animations, but keep in mind that a good Wusa can cancel these when you go for the grab. So lastly we have the Berserker, an absolute disgusting class, I truly hate them. Both Succession and Awakening is a really difficult matchup for us. Both of them are very tanky and have passive ignore grab resist. And due to their tankiness you'll have a really hard time one comboing them unless you are full AP build. And if they survive the combo they will simply run away and heal up between the combos making a good berserker literally unkillable if you cannot one combo them because they are one of the fastest classes in the entire game and they completely ignore the fact that a stamina bar is supposed to exist. You cannot catch them at all and you cannot run away from them. Now a Awakening Berserker has a lot of frontal guards so you can CC them with Sea Mist and as always you do want to have your mermaid buff up against Berserkers because they do have a lot of grabs even if they do have the passive ignore resist. Now the Awakening Berserker do have a ranged knockdown that is very fast so be careful of this one and the Succession Berserker have a very dangerous shift Q ability that stuns you, be careful of this one. Now if you've made it this far into the video I truly appreciate you watching, thank you so much and hopefully this video ends up being helpful to some people. I ended up spending a lot of time on this video, consumed way more time than I initially thought. I had to make decisions on what to add to this video and not, I will make a AOS specific video later. If you have any questions just ask them in the comments on the discord or on my stream. The best way to support me is to comment and like on this video for the YouTube algorithm and follow me on Twitch. Thank you so much.